great to have you back in another lesson on sound and music which i consider as much science as it is art or talent and by the time you finish this lesson you'll most likely agree with me so what we learned in this lesson is one how harmonics are formed with standing longitudinal waves and two what is the relationship between length of a musical instrument and the sound they produce and I think this is the most interesting part. Well, before we dive into this, I'd like you to press the subscribe button so that you continue to get notifications on all new videos from me. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and also share with someone who can benefit from it. So we learned in lesson number eight that standing waves can be set up on a stretch string that is fixed at both ends. And the reason why these waves get created is that waves traveling along the string are reflected on either end of the string and at certain wavelengths the superposition of waves results in a standing wave pattern and the frequency at which this happens is called the resonant frequency. So let's try to understand the sound waves that are produced in pipes as opposed to strings that we've already covered in the earlier lesson. Well, the physics behind creation of sound waves in a pipe filled with air is much like the creation of standing waves in a string or a transverse wave. The only difference is that in transverse waves, a particle of the medium moves perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the wave. But in a pipe that has air, the motion of the particles of standing wave is parallel to the direction of the wave. So throughout this lesson, you should keep in mind that there is actually no difference in standing waves produced in a string or in a pipe, barring the direction of the motion of the particles of the medium. So much like the transverse waves or the waves in a string, the waves in a pipe are reflected at the end and therefore they travel back through the pipe to interact with the waves moving opposite to them. And this reflection happens even if the pipe is open at both ends. Well, the reflection is not as complete as when the pipe is closed. And if you're able to create waves that have wavelengths, that is a certain multiple of the length of the pipe, superposition of the waves happens and standing waves get created. Such wavelengths then have corresponding resonant frequencies and we'll learn more about it as we move ahead in this lesson. So you see, the closed end of a pipe is quite like the fixed end of a string so that there is zero displacement of particles of the medium at ends. And therefore, these are called nodes. And, and the open end of a pipe is, you can say, like the end of a string that is attached to a ring that can move up and down Hence, this must be the antinode. So, so let us start by studying standing waves in a pipe that has two open ends. So, if you take a magnified version of the molecules vibrating in a pipe that is open at both ends, the molecules as they move back and forth would look something like this. So, you can see that the particles of the medium are vibrating wildly at ends and as you keep moving inside, the vibration amplitude keeps reducing till you reach the middle where the vibration is zero. Well, you can say that the antinode should be at the end because you have maximum displacement here and the node is right here in the middle because there's no displacement of the particles. And so this is a standing longitudinal wave. But by showing it in this form, you, you do not quite get the feel of a standing wave as we got while dealing with transverse standing waves. So to get that feel, what we'll do is that we'll graph the motion of the particle on an x, y plane where x will be the distance of the particle from one end of the pipe. So let's say if we assume one end of the pipe as the origin, then say if we take this particle, it is at a distance x1 from the origin and has this as the vibration amplitude. So what we'll do is show this amplitude that is actually in the xx direction on the y-axis. So 
Let us start at the left end of the pipe where the particle is at zero x position and the amplitude is maximum. And we take this amplitude happening in plus x direction and show it on y axis in the plus y direction instead. And since the particle also moves in minus x direction, we need to show the movement on the y scale in the negative y direction too. Then if we move more towards the center, we find the amplitude has reduced and using the same understanding, we can show the amplitude of this particle on yy scale. And well, if you move to the center, the displacement is zero. And if you move further down, you will find the amplitude starts increasing again and the plots would look like this. Then if you connect these points, what you see is this curve and we'll put the same curve here also since uh, each point vibrates in the other direction as well. And here then you get a standing wave representation for a longitudinal sound wave. So what is important here to remember is that while in transverse waves, the standing waves actually look like this visually too, the standing waves represented here for longitudinal waves is only a graphical representation since the particles of the medium are not moving up and down, they are moving parallel to the x-axis. So when waves form this way in a pipe, it produces a sound that is called the fundamental mode or the first harmonic. And you'd observe that for this to happen, the waves in the pipe that has length L must have L is equal to lambda upon two. Well, you can see here that if this represents one full lambda or a complete wavelength, you see it starts from here and then it restarts here so that this is one wavelength. So if this is one wavelength lambda, then this length is actually half of lambda. Uh, let me show you this. This is one fourth of lambda. Then you have another one fourth of lambda and therefore you get half lambda. So for first harmonic, L should equal lambda upon two or lambda should equal two L. So next we create a wave in the pipe such that you have two nodes or Visually, there are two points in the pipe where the particles of the air have zero motion. And this pattern then produces a sound called the second harmonic and requires sound waves of wavelengths such that L is equal to lambda. Well, you can see that this is one full wavelength. It starts from here and ends at the same point up here. So L is equal to lambda or, or let us write lambda is equal to 2L upon 2. And soon you'll understand why I'm writing it this way. Now, the third harmonic requires L equal to 3 by 2 lambda because you can see here that you have one full wavelength and then you have another half a wavelength and therefore 1 plus half is equal to 3 by 2. So, lambda should equal to L upon 3 and so on. Well, you see a nice pattern here where higher harmonics can be created as long as lambda is equal to 2 L upon N for n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Then n here is called the nth harmonic. Well, if v is the speed of the wave, we can say that f is equal to v upon lambda. And if we put the value of lambda as this, then f is equal to nv upon 2l for, again, n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So F then is the resonant frequency corresponding to various harmonics that get produced in this pipe, which is open at both ends. So what happens when we have a pipe that is closed at one end? Well, we can see that if one end is closed, vibrations at this point are not possible. And this then becomes a note and you have maximum vibration at the other end only. And when this happens, you can see that this length is just one fourth of the wavelength and therefore L is equal to lambda upon four or lambda is equal to four L. Then if we have say one more node formed in this pipe, 
then you can see that the number of wavelengths in this length L are half here and one fourth here so that you get so that you get half plus one fourth or three by fourth of a wavelength or you can say L is equal to three by four lambda or lambda is equal to four upon three L. Uh, let's see what happens when you have two nodes instead. You get one full wavelength and another one fourth here so that the total is five upon four wavelengths in inner length L. So L is equal to five by four lambda or you can say lambda is equal to four upon five L. You would have guessed by now seeing the pattern if there are three nodes L should equal 4L upon 7. So for standing waves to form in a tube that has one closed end, lambda should equal 4L upon N where N is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. That is odd numbers. So the corresponding resonant frequencies are then if you take F is equal to V upon lambda, F equals N V upon 4L for N equal to 1, 3, 5 and so on. So you see you will get odd harmonics only when the pipe is open at one end and closed at the other. In other words you cannot set up second, fourth, sixth or even harmonics in such a pipe. So if we apply this theory to stringed instruments or piped instruments we can say that the length of the musical instrument determines the frequencies that can be produced in that instrument. So small length implies higher frequencies since lower L will yield a higher frequency for a given V and harmonic value. So if you take an instrument like this that, that's a violin and has short strings or length L, you'll find it has a sound like this. which is a high frequency and if you take this one that is longer strings I think it's a cello it'll be a lower frequency output and sound like this. Likewise if we use the equation for piped instruments we find that the piped instruments that are long will produce sounds of lower frequency compared to piped instruments with shorter length. So let us take this piped instrument called a soprano pipe that is short in length and produces a sound like this. That is high frequency and on the other hand if you take an instrument that has a long pipe like a bass saxophone it sounds like this which is a low frequency. So my question to you is how many of you now believe that music is as much science as it is art? If you believe it is science, please write in the comments below. I'm curious to know how many of you believe so. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.